This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio! To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And you can listen to us 724-365 at our main website at www.exoneradiotv.com. The Exxon store is now officially opened. The Exxon Christmas store is also open now. Because this is the season to be jolly, right guys? The website is www.xzonexmas.com. Exxonexmas.com. And uh, we're being brought to you around the world on the Exxon Broadcast Network, iHeart Radio, Turquoise Radio, Libsyn, Apple iTunes, Speaker, Blueberry, YouTube, and Boxy, just to name a few. And uh, once again, www.exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour, Exxon Nation, is Kahira O'Donnell. She was brought up uh, overseas and has lived with several local families in many cultures giving her a wide perspective and a rich history to draw upon. Armed with her multicultural history, combined with a degree in psychology, lifelong immersion in indigenous practices, esoteric studies, and a deep understanding of human nature, Kihira creates multifaceted characters and stories that are engaging, dynamic, realistic, and <clears throat> boldly erotic. Hmm... Now, Kahira now lives in the beautiful mountains of Colorado, where she enjoys kayaking, backpacking with her adult children, a quiet home, beautiful scenery, and immersing herself in the art of storytelling. Her website is www.kahiraodonnell.com, and that is C-A-H-I-R-A-O-D-O-N-N-E-L-L.com. And Kahira, welcome to the X-Zone. Hey, thank you so much, Rob. Nice to be here. It's great having you with us. Um... I, I was just reading this, and it says realistic and boldly erotic. <laughs> well, that, that kind of perks the interest, doesn't it? Yeah, it's called my interest. Craig's, <laughs> Craig's interest. Uh, and I'm Not sure, the usual fare, huh? <laughs> and, and, and you see, I can, I can just see the traffic jams that we're now causing because people are saying, wait a second, hold on, this is the X Zone, and they're talking about erotic stuff? Hmm. <laughs> tell, tell, you know, all, all kidding aside, um, how did you, what was it that, that kind of turned you into the direction of being an author? Well, I've actually been uh, an author for over 20 years. Um, I mostly wrote spiritual text, mm -hmm. uh, esoteric text, uh, school text, that sort of thing. And um, I've also been, um, yeah, I, I love romance. I, I love happy endings. I love things that make other people feel good. Oh, that's nice. And, you know, in our, in our day and age, there's, 
so many bad endings <laughs> out there right now. It seems yep. like on the news and this and that. But I'm really finding that people just really want to read something that shows the good side of life, shows the good side of love and romance, and has a happy ending. Um, and I couple that with um, I love the paranormal. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of experience in studying with indigenous peoples, and all of that just kind of blended well into paranormal romance. Why do you think that there's such an interest today in the paranormal? Well, uh, coming from my personal experience and uh, my personal beliefs, mm-hmm. I think it's because there's three-fourths of us as human beings that we have been taught to ignore, and that's our extra sense perception. Um, also, um, I, deal, I work a lot with um, intergalactic and science fiction romance, mm-hmm. because I think that's another thing that's out there that's real, that exists, that we've been taught to shut down and ignore. And the, the, the romantic genre or the fiction genre gives us a, an opportunity to write stories that people don't have to take seriously, but that can open their imagination to the infinite possibilities of human nature, whether it's earthly human or extraterrestrial, mm-hmm. that there's just so much out there that our, our imaginations have been shut down, and storytelling can open that back up so that we can actually access our own gifts. It's so nice and refreshing to hear that approach because in today's society, people are just inundated with all the data that takes away from the imagination. Like reality is is front and center in everybody's life, and I believe that the that the exercise that the imagination used to get doesn't get it anymore. So uh, I'm looking forward to speaking with you this hour. Exonation, our guest this hour is Kahira O'Donnell, www.kahiraodonnell.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this two-minute commercial break as we once again visit that land called the Land of Advertisers. Woo! We'll be back on the other side of this two-minute commercial break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Hickok is an expert in exorcisms, psychic warfare, soul healing, angelology, soul retrieval, demonology, energy healing, long distance healing, astral healing, and much more. Nita is an interfaith minister because she believes all gods and goddesses are valid and that they are part of one divine force that is incomprehensible to us who are incarnated upon this earth. Nita has been doing astral healing, distant healing, spirit release, exorcism, house cleansing and blessings, soul restoring and revival, psychic vampire removal and curse removal, and much more for over 40 years. For more information or to contact Nita Hickok, visit her website at www.astralhealer.com. That's www.astralhealer.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464. Welcome back, everyone. Kahira O'Donnell is our special guest for this hour. Her website is kahiraodonnell.com. That's C-A-H-I-R-A-O-D-O-N-N-E-L-L.com. 
What experiences have you personally had when it comes to the paranormal, Kahira? Well, quite quite a few, really. Um, I was kind of born with um, extrasensory perception, if you mm-hmm. want to call it anything else. I'm, I'm pretty psychic, very sensitive to other people's feelings around me. And I really do think I uh, actually draw on that a lot in writing because I, it, it's given me a, a deeper understanding of human nature, in mm-hmm. a way. Yeah. Um, and um, I work as a medical intuitive, so I, I, I'm familiar with the shamanic skills and the you know, remote viewing skills, and, and I've worked with that oh, off and on all my adult life. So it's so easy to take that, and most people don't even believe in it, and weave it into a story where it's believable. So people that do have that, do have those experiences, can read it, even in fiction form, and start to recognize what's really going on for them. You, you, you know, when you sit down to write one of your books, do you have a whole story thought up, or, or is it a, a work in progress? Um, actually, I've got a lot of books going at once, because I'll wake up in wow. the middle of the night, with a story moving and characters moving, mm-hmm. kind of in my half-wake, half-sleep, I'll jot stuff down, and that'll bring it up. I probably have 12 books in, in this genre, different aspects of this genre, going at any given time, but not complete and published. And so the uh, characters of the stories will start to interweave with each other, the themes will start to interweave, and it's really boring, this amazing dynamic um, creation, the, particularly the ones that are intergalactic, because there's a lot of different uh, federations and this sort of thing interacting mm-hmm. there. But um, I'm, I'm to the point now where a lot of them are coming to fruition at once, which is really fun. You know, I used to have a, uh, somebody suggested that I put a little notebook beside the bed, and when I wake up in the morning, just jot, jot down my dreams, or whenever I wake up at night, just jot down my dreams. And I gave that up in a hurry because I couldn't understand what the hell I was writing. <laughs> yeah, I have to, to just write a few, few major lines. I do them on... on um flashcards, oh. and that way that I can throw them into the, the pile, which book they belong to, uh, because some of it is my nonfiction stuff, too. So, you know, it's just it's as the spirit moves me, if you will. So it's really very um, um, spontaneous, mm-hmm. and yet when I get done, it's, it's, it's almost as if I started from beginning and end and thought it out, and there's a plot and everything else. It's really kind of fascinating to watch. So, so I would imagine that when you're writing all these different books at the same time, it's just like sitting down in front of the TV and going through the remote, uh, remote control from channel to channel to channel in it, but except in your case, it's from script to script to script. Yes, and when you yeah. ch- switch that channel, suddenly you're immersed in that particular program. Fascinating. It's like you've never left it. You know, so the yeah. series, oh, I remember what they did last week, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. What is your favorite genre? When it, yeah, now, you write, yeah, I know you write many paranormal romances, but is there one specific type that you like writing more about than another? Well, I really like the science fiction. I was an old Trekkie, <laughs> and it leaves you with so many opportunities to express... Um, different mm-hmm. aspects of people as, as in being alien traits. So you can really concentrate on, say, the protectiveness of a male or the um, intuition of a female, if they're being represented in races that carry that very heavily. Um, so it's really fun there. I really have a lot of fun there. But I do a lot of military, um, special ops. Right. I like that. I like shapeshifter. I do a lot of vampire. Um, but what's really, really fun is they tend to interweave. So, like, I have uh, science fiction that one of the, the uh, races are vampiric in nature. And I have, like, the one I've, the one I've just got, the one that's out right now, The Long Dark Night. Mm-hmm. They start out in a special ops, end up, you know, in a battle zone, um, go clear across the room, world to Iraq, but they end up on a ranch in Wyoming and, uh, you know, working, working on a ranch. So there's, there's aspects of all of that going on, plus the heroine is psychic. And that's, you know, what drives the whole story. So it's fun to watch them interweave. So what kind of research do you do for your books? Because I, I'm, I'm sure that, that there, 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 has to be, there has to be real, uh, there has to be research done in order to get the, the plots right and to, to get the different types of paranormal events that you incorporate in your books, uh, you know, right or wrong, because people will, will hold you accountable for that, I would imagine. Well, absolutely, and there's no point putting something out there that's just kind of half-cocked. I mean, Mm. the whole point here is writing in a fiction format, but with real believable stuff that can be incorporated in people's lives. 
And so, say, for instance, I have um, a whole bunch of friends that I draw on, military friends. Some of them were um, uh, uh, from Desert War. Mm -hmm. You know, one of them, actually, his son was among the ones that was in the, um, that, uh, the, the, uh, sorry, SEALs that right. got captured by the, by the uh, Iraqis. Oh, my gosh. Um, or the Taliban. Yeah, his sons. And they, I was actually visiting them at the time that happened. So I was getting inside intel, right. you know, that I, you would, normally wouldn't. And so I can call on these people. Okay, so what kind, of, what kind of a gun would they be using for this? What kind of helicopters would they be using for that? That sort of thing. And then um, my children, the father of my children, I was married to him for 20 years. He's um, he used to fly... Uh, trained people in uh, aerobatics, and also he was an um, uh, excellent commercial pilot, and he worked with military, uh, you know, interface with military uh, liaison, with, um, and he still does that. And so from by osmosis, I got a lot of information about aviation and flight paths and different, you know, airplanes, been on all sorts of them. Wow. So, you know, I can always call him and ask him particular questions. So I, I do research all of this. I have a lot of medical background. Uh, in my normal life, I've worked with a lot of MDs, and I can call them up. So there's a lot of physiology and things that are actually very profound and accurate in, um, in, the, in the writings that I do. How do you base the romance that you put into your books? How do you develop the romantic um, episode and, and the climactic end? Well, at least you didn't ask me how I research it. I really appreciate that, Rob. I was going to, but I bit my <laughs> tongue. <laughs> well, they just kind of grow organically. Um, the, there's a the character development that automatically happens between these between the heroine and hero, and they're they're very dynamic people. The relationship becomes very dynamic, and the whole interaction just kind of automatically develops from the characters themselves. It comes to a point for me that they're almost so real life that I'm just writing a story that they're showing me or I can feel through them. So I, I you know, I don't plan it ahead of time. It just, the scene will start to form and I'll just write it and I'll look at it afterwards and I'll go, whew, I think I'll go take a cold shower. <laughs> Do you find that the the audience, the readers are wanting more details these days than compared to when you and I were kids and the the science fictions uh, that, that we'd read? Oh, heavens, yes, on, on all fronts, mm -hmm. on the um, erotic front, on the si science front, you know, does this uh -huh. really work? Uh -huh. uh, you know, you better, you better know how those plants spin around up there if you're going to be writing about them, because people are savvy anymore. You know, they want details about that. And also, I think people want a lot more detail and intelligence and characterization. They want to really be able to believe this person is, is real and alive and engage with them. And people watch TV. They watch this. Mm -hmm. They watch that. They don't settle for the mundane and the shallow anymore. So tell me, um, do you get explicit in the romantic department? Is it, is it parallel to Penthouse? No, there. Well, yes and no. Okay, it's it's not like penthouse. <laughs> you, you know, I'm tre I'm treading very softly here. You're doing very well, very well, Rob. Um, these are adult romances. Okay, they okay. they can be explicit, they can be detailed, but there's also a deep level of uh, mutual honoring, respect, mm -hmm. development of the male female relationship well, that I quite frankly find lacking in in a lot of these kind of stories. I agree. With and you. some of mine are more one. Some of mine are more one way than the other. It just depends on how the story gets written. The, you know, there's, there's, in t in today's books, uh, whether it's magazines or what, there there is a lack of respect that's that's going into the books. And I'm so happy to hear you talking about the way that you write because you know, an author is a teacher. An author gives out. Lessons. Uh, an author gives out ideas, so it's uh, it's commendable. Thank you, because that is, if you want to talk about why the erotic aspect of romance ends up in these books, it's because it is. I see. Mm -hmm. This is my take. Okay. But out there in our media, in our advertising, in our clothing, in everything, sexuality is yeah. exploited and cheapened to nauseam. And people are objectified, and you know, true yeah. romance and true relationship has become very shallow because of it. But you and know, so, putting but, an example out there of what it can be mm -hmm. like, what true honoring can be, even though there is 
you know, physical relationship, or specifically when there's physical relationship, is what I would like to add to, to, to the world. Unfortunately, in the world that we're in right now, based on the media, and I blame the media a lot for, for the, the evils in life. You know, for example, <laughs> when you turn the news on, the creed is, if it don't bleed, it don't lead. Yeah, isn't that lovely? That's, that's true. Yeah. And sex sells. Like how many young yeah. girls go to school and they 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 think that there's something wrong with them because they, you know, they don't look like that that person, that young girl on the cover of a teen magazine that's been photoshopped oh, to the mask. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and dressed inappropriately for age. Yep. It's just yeah, and it's it's not like I'm a well. I couldn't be a prude and do what I do, could I? <laughs> but to have a healthy example. Of, of sexuality, we don't have that. It's it's either something dirty, hidden, naughty that we pull out from underneath the bed, or um, it's uh, watered down to the point that it's, you know, just mm-hmm. flowery and not realistic. And trying to find a way to express the true balance uh, in a relationship between masculine and feminine, you can't leave sex out of it. You know, I was going to a huge part of our chemistry. I, I was going to ask you what it was you pulled out from under your bed, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> You're getting smarter by the minute. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> At times, my wife says I can be very smart. You know. <laughs> I was actually thinking more of teenage boys and flashlights. Okay. <laughs> there, there, there's a verse that is coming into my mind as this conversation is going on. And it keeps on saying, and lead us not into temptation. Don't go down that road, Rob. Don't go down that road. (laughs) Carrie, you and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the line. Great having you with us. It's, It's nice to know that there's authors out there who have morals and who are honest and want to get the right message across. Hats off to you. Exonation Kahira O'Donnell is our guest, and we'll both be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the Exon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. What if someone told you you could live to be 120? Would you believe him? What if he told you the Bible guaranteed it? All you needed to do was follow his rules and buy his products. Would you do it? What if you invested 20 years of your life in him? What if he tested his substances on your child? What if your child became brain damaged as a result? Meet Dr. Tyler Belknap, a fast-talking Texas ad man turned health guru. At the helm of a vast health food and supplement empire, he has established himself as the authority on nutrition and longevity. But what his followers don't know is that his products are laced with bizarre psychoactive substances from genetically modified plants developed in his very own secret lab. No wonder his customers can't stop using them. Tyler Belknap will stop at nothing to keep his edge in the market, even if it means experimenting on children. Chasing 120, a story of food, faith, fraud, and the pursuit of longevity, a novel from the pen of political cartoonist Monty Wolverton, is an easy and entertaining read full of rich characters and intrigue. It hits home in a world filled with all kind of hucksterism and offers a glimpse of what can happen when GMO technology falls into the wrong hands. Chasing 120 by Monty Wolverton. Get your copy today at www.ptm.org forward slash 120 or on Amazon.com. The ability to access the knowledge of the universe is much easier for us to access than we may believe. Brad Johnson, Conscious Matrix Communicator, is one of these unique individuals who is able to access a strong connection to the universal mind. Through his connection, Brad has assisted thousands of clients from all over the world through natural intuitive assistance. 
The intuitive information received is vast, covering a wide range of subjects. Brad's innate ability includes being able to access one's own universal matrix to help them realize their potential to create a life of profound greatness. One-on-one -on -one private sessions with Brad Johnson are available to anyone from around the world. Brad is also a proficiently trained psychic, Akashic Records reader, an online spiritual teacher, founder of his own unique and powerful healing system, Body Regeneration Healing, as well as a professional conscious channeler in communication with his own higher self-consciousness known as Adronis. For more information or to book a service appointment with Brad Johnson, visit his website at www.consciousmatrix.com. That's www.consciousmatrix.com. Elizabeth Joyce with Stargazing the week of December 1st through December 7th for the X-Zone. December will be a positive month for most of us, although there still can be some challenges. Overall, you will find a rise in your luck as we move away from watery Scorpio's influence into fiery Sagittarius energies. You will feel a sense of optimism and good dynamics with whatever is happening in your life. It's been a long time, since 2011, since this wave of positive energy has been present. This week is filled with planets in fire and air, which means the emphasis is on the head and not the heart. December 1st is an upbeat day, full of light, as the sun is in Sagittarius and the moon is in Aries. This aspect sets the foundation for the power-based shift of Mars on Thursday, when it moves out of Capricorn and into Aquarius. Because Aquarius believes in open sources of information and a new technology that takes place through the efforts of many, all modes of communication, including social networking and Cyber Monday, are energized and electrified. On Saturday, December 6th, the Gemini full moon brings us to the emotional high tide for December. Like any full moon, this one reminds us to finish what we've started and find resolution to relationship issues or anything else that's hanging in the balance. This Gemini full moon connects with Mars and Aquarius because it makes two positive connections to Uranus and Aries. Uranus rises and trines the sun in sextiles the moon, increasing the likelihood of coming up with cutting-edge technologies and the mindset that will make information more transparent and available to everyone. It also brings secrets into the light, both worldwide and personally. Because next week brings the Pluto-Uranus square, the sixth one, a latent energy or frustration might be building up within you despite the good events that are happening around you, and this might end up making you act in a different manner instead of your normal reactions. This could be detrimental to the relationships both professionally and in your home and with family matters. Do not allow this frustration and silent anger to build up. Meditate and work on it. Try to talk things over with people and reason things out rather than carrying grudges. Be careful from now until New Year's Day as health issues could become chronic if you are not careful. Don't worry or be stressed out about your health unnecessarily. Just take your nutrients, be careful about what you eat, and of course, how much you drink. You will be grateful and pleased at how people in authority support you this month. Allow yourself to be positive and feel creative and other satisfaction as you approach the holidays. And for more information, visit Elizabeth Joyce website at www.new-visions.com. That's www.new-visions.com. Exonation Kahira O'Donnell is our special guest this hour, www.kahiraodonnell.com. She is the author of a number of books we were talking in the first hour about um, how she how she gets into the swing of things. I had to watch that, you know, swing of things. I think that, Craig, am I safe with saying that? Yeah. All I, right. I think, I think you can pull that one off. <laughs> you did it to me again. I, I was quiet. Oh, you I pulled, did. <laughs> you pulled it off. You pull. <laughs> okay. Let's start this over again. <laughs> <laughs> I love your sense of humor. <laughs> um, where was I, Craig? Quick, help me. 
First of your book in your Seven Sister series is The Long Dark Night, and um, we talked about it briefly, but tell us the the um, the premise and the story behind the story without giving us too much information because we want people to go to Amazon.com right now or your website and buy it. Okay. Um, well, she. this is the first in the Seven Sisters series, mm-hmm. uh, Seven Sisters of the Pallades. Right. And she being one of the Seven Sisters, the heroine, is the Tyla Martin. And, uh, you know, her touch could kill or heal. Um, and she'd lived a life of loneliness, isolated by necessity. Her psychic gifts had been discovered by an Army major who had actually arranged to have her special op trained. And she was used for special assignments because of the things that she could do. Um, and during this story, as she was um, the government's secret weapon, and it was kind of brought out and dusted off to put into service to save the captured Navy SEALs. And this takes place in a time when the Taliban had uh, captured some of our, of our SEALs. Um, and then the hero is Secret, Agent, uh, secret Service Special Agent Nicholas Payne. And he um, was a Secret Service agent who was partially retired to take care of a ranch after his parents had died. Uh, and he was pulled in because it was his brother, uh, Navy SEAL Daniel um, uh, Payne, was missing in action, captured by the Taliban. And the way it works is that Tyla can, uh, by touching her fingers on the, the back of, of someone's hand, if they're a relative, can actually access and track where the missing person is. And so that's how they get together and how they start working together. And the story develops from there. They end up going over, actually, to Saudi Arabia and then into Iraq um, and uh, rescuing the SEALs. And then uh, she actually goes into um, um, kind of a PTSD thing where he has to kind of step in for her, and they end up out on the brother's ranch, and the story just deepens and gets more and more fun. Eventually she's taken to a uh, healer, a Native American healer, who is their cousin's uh, grandfather out on, um, in the Wyoming wilderness, and they undergo a real major um, esoteric healing. Um, the, the story is just full of action and humor and interpersonal stuff. It's just delightful. Um, and that's probably about all I can tell without ruining the story. Any erotica? Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Jeez. You, you didn't mention it, so I was starting to wonder. Well, I wouldn't want you to wonder about that, but I was trying to help you out there, Rob. Thank You've you. been having a little trouble tonight with that, you know. <laughs> what can I say? You know, because you wrote uh, this book, and it does does involve the military. What, what is your opinion? Because I, I know that you that you know a, a number of people within the military. Uh, you shared some some information with me uh, off air that I'm not going to get into. But <laughs> not all the good stuff. The good stuff. The good stuff. Well, everything we talked about off air was good. I know. But the, when you were at your 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 friend's house and they got the call about their son. You know, so so what is your opinion of what is going on in the Middle East right now with ISIS and, and the terrorist threat? Right. Um, it's difficult for me to really state an opinion because mm-hmm. I'm not sure of the validity and quality of the information we yeah. get over the media. I agree. Uh, so, you know, so I kind of agree to just sit back and watch mm-hmm. and not make an opinion and just, you know, watch what's going on, watch what's coming in, see how it feels, that sort of thing. I do know that there's a lot of beautiful, well-meaning, gallant people in the military. They're being manipulated by the powers that be, something they don't even know that's going on. Mm-hmm. And that is my concern, is what's really going on, what's it really being used for, and how is our poor military on in all the countries being exploited yeah. for the higher-ups to make money? That's my concern. It's, they're, they're pawns in, in a game of chess that involves billions of dollars. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. My heart goes out to them when they come back home, and so many of them are suffering with PTSD, and the care that they deserve for the... For the um, for the protection and the fighting for democracy that they do, and you know, it's it's so wrong. It is so wrong. And it when, is. when the president sent over all these people to uh, Africa to to fight the Ebola or be part of the fight against Ebola, I, I couldn't understand it because we can't take care of the people that are coming home now from from war theaters. What are we going to do with people who come back here with Ebola? We can't take care of the PTSD. We, can, you know, we can barely take care of the, the emergency care that they do need from wounds. How, in the name of heaven, are we going to take care of them with Ebola? 
Exactly, and uh, where'd the Ebola start anyway is always left for question. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of sad times, and our priorities are definitely skewed, and I don't think our information is clear. So it's really hard to, to set an opinion, mm-hmm. but certainly trying to hold the truth and sit back and say, okay, what's mine to do here? What's mine to participate in? What's mine to get on the bandwagon about? Because usually there's an answer, and it's usually none of it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's, uh, it just makes me wonder what is really going on. The story behind the story that we never seem to get. Exactly. Explanation. Kahira O'Donnell's our special guest. Her website is www.kahiraodonnell.com. Um, what's next in your series of books? Now, the first part, the first book in the series is The Lone Dark Night. What comes after yeah, that? Yeah, The Lone Dark Night. That's the one that's out as we speak. Mm-hmm. And then in the Seven Sisters series, the next one that's going to come out is um, called um, Ghost Talk. And that's the cousin of the one of the hero in The Long Dark Night. He's part Native American and um, part Lakota, actually. And uh, it's a really fun one. Um, he finds his lady um, in out on the ranch, buried in the snow, <laughs> um, after a car ex- accident. So it, it gets very dynamic. Uh, the next one that's going to come out, though, is actually out of a different series. And that series is um, the... Um, uh, Darkonian Chronicles, mm-hmm. and the one that's going to come out is the uh, Chalice of Kari, and that's a really fun story. It's um, it takes place in in the slight future, and uh, the heroes are uh, alien, but they're humanoid, and the heroine is a uh, human that had special gifts here, and the theme of these stories is the uh, of course the people off planet uh, they're for whatever reason, uh, running uh, more men being born than more females being born than males, and the males are searching for their predestined mate. A lot of them are being found on the earth during these times of turmoil when, uh, you know, there's a lot of deaths going on from, you know, natural disasters and this and that and the next thing. And they have a, you know, a ruling and a coalition that makes sure that there's no exploitation, so they can only take their mates at the time of their death on earth and then heal them, and then they end up with this whole new life um, with a different race on a different planet or doing different things. There's a lot of of, uh, um, military involvement there, a lot of dynamics with different uh, galaxies and and customs and and pirating and, you know, exploitation and all this fun stuff. And the heroes and the heroines get to dance a lot with making a difference in in that uh, arena. So it's a really fun one, and it should be out probably in about three months, and that one's going to be the Chalice of Kai. Talking about aliens, do you, th- do you think that we are being visited by people from other planets? Well, how can we not be? I mean, you know, I, I have a scientific background, mm-hmm. and uh, statistically speaking, it's impossible that we're not. Statistically speaking, it's impossible that we're the only ones. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that one of the things, one of the misnomers we have is that people have to use our technology to get here, when indeed our awareness can travel across the universe and beyond. That's what shamans have been doing for eons, and that's where the Egyptians came, you know, the work that they did. That's where the Mayans got their information for the calendars. There's no way they had an information base or a knowledge base back then to do the Mayan calendar as accurate as it was, because it actually charts the movement of uh, galaxies and planets. But when we consider that people can actually commune mentally and psychically, across great distances, then that changes the whole equation. So I think that kind of information is being exchanged on this planet uh, and has been for generations. Why do you think the governments of the world are suppressing this information? Wouldn't it be to the world's benefit to share the information openly with the visitors? Of course, but then follow the money. Uh. You know, a lot of the more advanced ones that I've got a sensing of, whether it's through writing fiction or just, mm-hmm. you know, you know, wh- whatever way it comes to me, is, you know, our, our way of commerce and money and exploitation is way, 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 way backwards. And so if we can assume that we evolve beyond that, and if we can assume these people have evolved beyond that, it certainly doesn't serve the powers that be to associate openly with them here. Because of the the violence, because of the illness, because of the the pollution, global warming, and everything else that is negative 
happening on the earth today. Why would aliens from another planet who would be far more advanced than we are technologically as well as uh, genetically, why would they come here? What do we have to offer? Well, uh, why would we go to Africa to fight Ebola? No, it's on the same planet. <laughs> because we don't, we, but, don't want, you know, we don't want leaving Africa. <laughs> that's the God's truth that's about it. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, I really, I really be, believe, you know, from a lot of things I've looked in, a lot of studies mm-hmm. I've done, a lot of the other research that I've done, is that Earth is really coming into a time of huge transformation. And we have a possibility of evolving well beyond our limitations. And that's drawn attention to us. Hmm. And a lot of it has to do with where we are in the galaxy at the particular time, based on the Mayan calendar and the prophecies of coming into a really higher frequency time where we can change the nature of human nature. And so it's a curiosity. You know, why do we go study monkeys? <laughs> well, because we want to find out why they throw their dung all the time. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when you look at what's going on on this planet, you know, if if they were there, why wouldn't they help us? Why wouldn't they... Say, all right, guys, there's an energy crisis. Listen, we've been watching you guys for thousands of years, thousands and thousands of years. You know what? You're trying. You're struggling. We can see the strife. We can see the agony. We can see all the pain and the sorrow. We're going to help you out. Well, you know, Rob, I really think that that's been going on and it's been um, stifled by the powers that be. I have, I've met a lot of different scientists that have been working on different alien technology. They speak openly that they're coming, this is coming to them in their dreams, and they feel like it's coming from somebody off planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a perpetual motion machines, toroidal field technology, all sorts of this kind of stuff. And you know what happens to them. Here come the black helicopters, and the, they're threatened, and their, their stuff is outlawed, and stuff is taken away. We have been given, I believe, numerous times, all sorts of solutions that would change the face of the way we run energy. And it's been covered up. Stand by. You and I have to take our final break for the Sour XO Nation. Kahira O'Donnell is our very special guest. It's great having you with us. Thanks for joining us uh, tonight. Thank you, Rob. You and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget the Exxon Christmas store is open www.exonexmas.com. My name is Rob McConnell. I'll be back. Don't go away. Hi, this is Rob McConnell, just letting you know that the X Chronicles newspaper is now available online at www.xzonebookclub.com. All past editions and current editions of the X Chronicles newspaper are available for 99 cents. That's www.xzonebookclub.com, and that's 99 cents U.S. per edition. And don't forget, the X Zone store is now open as well for all of your X Zone Nation merchandise www.thexzonestore.com With each new extreme weather event or terrorist act, it becomes increasingly obvious that we live in uncertain and challenging times. We all buy car insurance, Why not collapse and catastrophe insurance? Matthew Stein, an MIT-trained engineer and green builder, has written two outstanding books to help people prepare, plan for, and deal with everything from minor situations lasting a few days to full-on collapse. Matt's first book, When Technology Fails, is a manual for self-reliance, sustainable living, and surviving the long emergency. This massive book covers the gamut from first aid and emergency preparedness to alternative healing, renewable energy, primitive living skills, and 18th century technologies that could be critical to your comfort and survival in a long-lasting crisis. Matt's second book, When Disaster Strikes, is a comprehensive emergency preparedness handbook and survival guide. When Disaster Strikes is an essential item for every family's go-bag. 
Both books are available at all usual sources. There's a wealth of totally free information posted at whentechfails.com, and author signed copies may be purchased at mattstein.com. That's www.whentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Okay, here you and I were talking before we went to the break about people you know in the scientific community who have openly talked to you about getting the information in dreams and and so on and how the the projects, the information, as well as the the um, the results of the, of the projects are being stifled. But if that is the case, let me ask you a question hypothetically. If that is the case, why wouldn't the ETs just do a landing in Washington, in Ottawa, and every major capital of the world so that their existence could not be denied any longer. And if, if in fact, the, the leaders of the world are all part of this global cover-up with members of the New World Order and the shadow government, why don't they just erase them? Goodbye. <laughs> And, and bring us back to a starting point where we could actually evolve into the species that I believe we were meant to be. Meanwhile, back in the caves. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying um, go that far back. I'm not saying go that I far back. So that, you know, that's a really good question, Rob, one that I can't answer. Yeah. But um, I really do think that the reason that I'm writing this kind of fiction is because it's a way that some of this information can slide in through my unconscious and into the general consciousness of the people that care to read it. And that can start opening people up, because I really feel it has to hit at the grassroots. I mean, you know, the only power these governments have is the the illusion that they hold over us. But, and the more more genres that we have out there mm-hmm. that uh, show people, even through fiction, that there are other uh, opportunities, there are other ways of being, there are other people out there. Uh, love can be love. <laughs> you know, uh, there can be win-win scenarios. Sure. There, can, there can be camaraderie. The more that we get that into the general public, each of us through our own gifts, the more it's, it's all around us. You just open your eyes. It, you know, it, like the Matrix said, this is the world that's been pulled over our eyes. So even if, you know, I mean, when I was in psychology, I have a degree in it, a guy walked in to our classroom and held up the prof with a banana. And afterwards, everybody was told to write down everything they saw. Nobody saw the banana. Everybody saw a gun. Hmm. Now, that is how, never underestimate the power of denial. That's how programmed Many of us are. And deprogramming from the grassroots up through fiction, through stories, through music, through uh, science fiction, through actual you know, esoteric writing, yeah. I think that that's the way to start preparing us to accept the reality of other lives. So is it possible that mainstream media is being used by the, by the powers to be to dumb down the, the public and... Let the public think that they do not have any rights, that they are being suppressed instead of giving the public the power that they have by simply voting. And for, you know, like I'm not saying go and cause the problems like they did in Fergus. I think that was way overboard, especially when you want justice, justice is served and you're not satisfied with the way justice went. So you burn down a city. Yeah, really. No, I, I totally believe. I mean, the media is way too powerful uh, of, of an avenue for it not to be exploited and co- totally controlled by the ones in power. And so is food. 
Okay, so is health care, so are drugs. Everything out there is being used to keep people in the dark. You know, the mushroom scenario. But we as individuals can give uh, through our gifts to each other, uh, and, and we can read other things, we can look at alternative sources like your radio show, and just stop immersing ourselves in the stuff that we know isn't true. Kihira, I love the way you think. We're going to have to have you back on the show because this is just the starting of the conversation. Continued success with your books. And Exonation, if you'd like to uh, get a copy of Kahira's books, all you have to do is go to, to Amazon.com right now, Google her name, or go to her website at kahiraodonnell.com. Until the next time you and I meet, my friend, take care of yourself. Thank you very much for sharing your time and evening with us. And uh, happy dreams. Thank you, Rob. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Thank you.